quad to protest rising tuition costs. Find out why students are wearing the square. Beavers are dodging, dipping, and ducking at this year's Rec Sports Dodgeball Tournament. I'm Cody Stover to give you the report. I'm Hayden Wilcox, and tonight we're talking about how this machine brings artifacts to the classroom. We'll have all that and more on tonight's episode of the Beaver News. Good evening and welcome to your Monday night edition of the Beaver News. I'm Brittany Mangold. And I'm Cody Stover. We're glad you could join us tonight. Tonight's top story, students rallied in the MU Quad today, protesting student tuition increases for the 2014 school year. Both Oregon State students and staff marched with the grassroots movement Wear the Square, a group started by ASOSU. In the protest, students were encouraged to wear red and or a red square on their clothing, which has become the symbol for the movement. Oregon State has seen the cost of tuition and fees rise from just under $6,000 in the 2007-2008 school year to now over $8,000. At today's protest, ASOSU provided a letter of supp for supporters of the movement to sign that will be sent to the State of Oregon Legislature, hoping to secure more investment in public universities and thus eliminate tuition rise. We spoke with Where the Square Movement leader, Brett Deaton, and student Leslie Mason for their thoughts on the project. One of the things we're trying to do is increase awareness with students as far as the increase in cost of tuition. Uh, one of the ideas this next year is that student tuition could actually go up $460, and that's been a 10-year. We're actually trying to get students to sign a petition, and what we can do is go up to the state legislature and explain that students do care about what's happening with higher education, and that we actually need funding for this program to work. So it's time for students to stand up, to voice their opinions, and go, legislature, you need to step up on your side and actually fund higher education. This board right here, so what does a $460 increase in tuition mean to you? It's an idea to bring to students of going, $460, what can you do with that? So there's lots of ideas as far as, you know, what students could do. There's someone here as far as, well, that means more time I'd spend in my parents' basement living at home. Um, you know, more money for athletics or more money to do the things that they would enjoy doing. I wrote um, more pressure on my parents in a time they don't need it because most of my college years here I've been supported a lot through my parents and as cliche as it sounds in this tough economic uh, times they don't need to be paying even five hundred dollars more a year to support me going here. I just think it's ridiculous that it continues to rise not just here but all of um, the Oregon University systems so I feel like they should pri prioritize our education a little bit more and stop having us pay so out of po pocket for it. And students have enough to worry about with rising tuition and creeping midterms, but many are still aware that police have still not yet apprehended the suspect in two different assault cases over the past month. With this apparent lack of closure, many female students are taking steps to heighten their protection, from carrying mace to stun guns, and yes, even self-defense classes. One community member... Cynthia Taylor, a martial arts and defense teacher in Albany, is now offering self-defense classes to students at a discounted price. Those who want more information about signing up for the classes can contact the OSU Department on Public Safety. To learn how the community is responding to these recent attacks, community members are providing information on the prevention of sexual violence and the recovery services offered by OSU tomorrow evening at 5.30 in the LaSalle Stewart Center. With week five right now, with tons of midterms and these tuition costs going up, students have a lot on their plate to deal with. Oh, yeah. How do you de-stress? Um, well, I resort for eating chocolate, and then I realize, oh, I should probably work out instead, so I do a lot of running. What about you? I definitely second the chocolate uh, motion, but also, yeah, exercise is a big thing. I like to go to Dixon, um, lift some weights, kind of clear my head. But this Saturday, we went to Dixon and saw a different way that students were clearing their head. Dodgeball. Whether you've seen the Ben Stiller and Vince Vaughn comedy or grew up playing it in PE class, the game has carved out its own little niche in American culture. But this weekend, the game of dodging, dipping, and ducking took center stage at Dixon Rec Center. The annual dodgeball tournament hosted by OSU Rec Sports took place this Saturday and over 100 dodgeballers competed in the event, which carried no entry fee and featured 17 teams. The event was a competition, with each team getting two games before entering into a single elimination playoff system to determine a winner. However, fun seemed to be the main theme of the day. 
I just like dodgeball because it's like competitive, but not too serious. And like most sports, if you lose, it's like it's a really big deal. But dodgeball is just for fun. Uh, it's fun. It just kind of takes you back to when you're a kid, and it's a little bit more competitive than it was then, but it's still just as fun. At the end of the day, Sigep Neri beat Ryder three to two in a best of five game series in the championship match to claim the title 2013 Rec Sports Dodgeball Tournament champions. The Rec Sports Dodgeball Tournament won't be back again until next year, but for those who are wishing to play dodgeball on campus on a more regular basis, there's the OSU Dodgeball Club. Me and uh, a couple other guys from today are uh, in the Dodgeball Club and uh, we play uh, twice a week uh, over in uh, Langdon. I was actually the president last year and uh, we are always looking for new members. Uh, usually you can just go through the Rec Sports Department and they'll put you in contact with us. and. Uh, we're always welcoming new people. We, we just kind of get together and play twice a week uh, for the entire year. So uh, it's just a lot of fun. It's uh, really competitive, but it's also at the same time really fun and uh, just kind of enjoyable. For now, the Dixon basketball courts will go back to hosting basketball. But on this fine Saturday afternoon, it was all about dodgeball. From Dixon Rec Center, I'm Cody Stover, KBVR Beaver News. A dress rehearsal is underway this evening for the Runway Rubbish Fashion Show. The annual Recycle Fashion Show is a great place for student designers to demonstrate their creativity while being environmentally friendly since the outfits are made with recyclable materials. Hosted by the OSU Fashion Organization, this annual event showcases student designs modeled by students and it's free to the public. The Runway Rubbish Fashion Show is tomorrow evening in the MU Ballroom. Doors open at 6 and the show begins at 7. Uh, today we're out in the MU, MU Quad just uh, trying to... This Saturday, Beavs Helping Kids will be, ho be hosting an all-day dance marathon in efforts to raise money for sick and injured children. We spoke with Beavs Helping Kids director Alex Ruger today in the quad for more information on this great cause. Uh, today we're out in the MU, MU Quad just uh, trying to promote our event that we're having this Saturday called a Dance Marathon. And uh, it's an event where you, where you come and you dance for seven hours. And uh, it's all based around uh, raising money for Children's Miracle Network. It goes towards uh, the, the Riverbend Hospital in Springfield, Oregon. And uh, all the money g helps go towards the pediatrics and needle neural care units, which uh, helps premature babies and kids with like cancer and stuff. Last year we raised around $5,000. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of, uh, bunch of people doing different things like uh, dance crews and uh, some, some uh, singing groups and stuff like that. The band's going to be there, the cheerleading's going to be there, and just other things like that. The OS Used Warehouse held a food drive discount sale this Saturday in support of Lynn Benton Food Share and as part of the bigger OSU Month of February campus-wide food drive. The campus surplus distributor, which offers deals on items such as furniture, electronics, bi and bicycles, normally holds Saturday's sales every Wednesday and on the first Saturday of the month. On this Saturday, buyers were treated to a 10% discount for bringing in one to food one to two food disc donations, or a 25% discount on their purchases for bringing in three or more donatable items. I talked to Steve Schofield, OSU's Surplus Warehouse Coordinator, and he reported that they had fairly steady business on Saturday, registering 27 new customers, and he estimated about 150 people came into the four-hour sale. For the past two weeks, we've been following our Beaver News reporter, Hayden Wilcox, as he brought us behind the scenes of the Cooper Surrey Archaeological Field School. Tonight marks the last segment of our series and the final words from the Cooper's Ferry as we find out how combining history and the digital technology can lead to the creation of engaging teaching tools. This report was supported by OSU and the Bureau of Land Management. Unless you happen to uncover an item for yourself, it's unlikely that you'll ever have the chance to hold on to a 10,000 year old artifact. But by utilizing modern technology, Dr. Davis aims to change that. So we're reimagining the idea of doing archaeology in a 21st century digital way. Using lasers, a 3D scanner can map tens of thousands of data points. Unless you happen to uncover an item for yourself, it's unlikely that you'll ever have the chance to hold on to a 10,000-year-old artifact. But by utilizing modern technology, Dr. Davis aims to change that. 
So we're reimagining the idea of doing archaeology in a 21st century digital way. Using lasers, a 3D scanner can map tens of thousands of data points. Each scan is accurate to 0.1 millimeters. That's one-tenth the width of a penny. What we can do with this is render three-dimensional models of the artifact. What's even better is we can take this three-dimensional model and send it off to have it replicated. We can print versions of the artifacts that we work with and distribute them to other people. We can use them for ourselves, for education. Students can handle them in classes. Students can handle artifacts that you never ever would be able to get your hands on. And this scan is the series of data points that have had a surface laid over the top of them so you can actually see the structure of the projectile point itself. From thousands of data points, a classroom-friendly copy is created, virtually the same as its prehistoric counterpart. So here we have a series of replicas of different... If you, you would like more information on our Cooper's Ferry segment, or if you missed a segment, the Beaver News will be posting the entire series on YouTube and our Facebook page. Well, before we close the show for tonight, our Monday night news would not be complete without our Monday night sports update with Milan Lawrence. Thanks, Brittany. Mm -hmm. The OSU women's basketball team faced two top 10 conference opponents this weekend here at Gill Coliseum. Friday night, they faced the number six ranked California Golden Bears and dropped the game 60 to 38, despite a game high 13 points for sophomore standout Allie Gibson. On Sunday afternoon, they faced the number four ranked Stanford Cardinal and showed they weren't going down without a fight. Gibson opened the second half with a reverse layup to cut the Cardinal lead to single digits. But Stanford's Chini Owumike had a career high 32 points and the Beavers could not overcome her as they lost 65 to 45 in the game. Gibson hit two threes, which brings her total to 84 overall during her short career in Corvallis. She's now tied for 10th all-time at OSU with Mandy Close. Despite dropping the last four in a row, head coach Scott Ruick remains positive about his team and their potential. In a post-game interview, he said, in quote, We're still finding ourselves offensively. We're developing big-time players in this program, but they're young, so we need this experience to grow, end quote. And in other sports news, the Oregon State wrestling team continues to dominate and move up the rankings week after week. They're now ranked as high as 9th in the country in the USA Today poll and 11th in the Associated Press poll. Saturday, the Beavers defeated Cal State Bakersfield in a big way, cruising past their opponent 35-7. This marks the 6th straight for the Beavers, as Taylor Meeks opened up the meet this Saturday, taking down Frankie Hurtado in just 52 seconds, giving OSU an early 6-0 lead. From there, the Beavers rallied off 29 straight points to go up 35-0, before the Roadrunners took the final two matches to make it 35-7 final. The, this weekend, the Beavers will host their last two home meets of the season, Saturday at 1 p.m. Mark Senior Day, the last home meet for the Beavers. Go out and support them, Beaver Nation. And for a more in-depth analysis of all your favorite Beaver sports, be sure and catch the Beaver Sports Show here on KBVR Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Well, that's all the news we have for you today. I'm Brittany Mangold. And I'm Milan Laurent. Thanks for watching and be sure to find us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter at The Beaver News. Have a good night.